July 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we may be able to comfort those who are experiencing any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ overflow toward us, so also our comfort through Christ overflows to you. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort that you experience in your patient endurance of the same sufferings that we also suffer. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you will share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, regarding the affliction that happened to us in the province of Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength so that we despaired even of living. Indeed, we felt as if the sentence of death had been passed against us, so that we would not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. He delivered us from so great a risk of death, and he will deliver us. We have set our hope on him that he will deliver us yet again. As you also join in helping us by prayer, so that many people may give thanks to God, on our behalf for the gracious gift given to us through the help of many. For our reason for confidence is this, the testimony of our conscience, that with pure motives and sincerity which are from God, not by human wisdom but by the grace of God, we conducted ourselves in the world and all the more toward you. For we do not write you anything other than what you can read and also understand. But I hope that you will understand completely just as also you have partly understood us, that we are your source of pride, just as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. And with this confidence, I intended to come to you first, so that you would get a second opportunity to see us, and through your help to go on into Macedonia, and then from Macedonia to come back to you, and be helped on our way into Judea by you. Therefore, when I was planning to do this, I did not do so without thinking about what I was doing, did I? Or do I make my plans according to mere human standards so that I would be saying both yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? But as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the one who was proclaimed among you by us, by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not always yes and no but it has always been yes in him. For every one of God's promises are yes in him. Therefore, also through him, the amen is spoken to the glory we give to God. But it is God who establishes us together with you in Christ and who anointed us, who also sealed us and gave us the spirit in our hearts as a down payment. Now I appeal to God as my witness that to spare you I did not come again to Corinth, I do not mean that we rule over your faith, but we are workers with you for your joy, because by faith you stand firm. God, yes, yes, and no, no. It's so fascinating what Paul was writing about in his letter because his opponents who were fighting hard against him we're accusing him of flip-flopping and being flaky, basically. And he was trying to explain to the church in Corinth, my marching orders come from God. My marching orders do not come from man. So if my yes turns into a no, or my no turns into a yes, it is because it's God's will and I am following God's will. And I find this section amazing, God, that we are not to act normal. I guess that's the best way to put it. 
our lives should look a lot different to other people. And, and granted, we're also going to have people come up against us like Paul did if our lives look different like that. But the reason we're doing it is not to cause frustration and people being antagonistic towards us. But it's because we're following your will and your will is definitely not what the world's will is in the slightest. God, I hope that and I pray that my life looks different to people in a good way. That my actions and my words are reflective of, of you, God. That they are actually getting a chance to see some of your attributes in how I act in this world. Now, I know for sure I don't always get this right more often than not. But God, I just ask that you, that you come alongside me. That you hold me accountable for following your will. And if that changes my yeses to no's and my no's to yeses. Um, I love what Paul says about you. That for every one of God's promises are a yes in him. Therefore also through him the amen is spoken to the glory we give to God. God I want my heart to always follow your will. I want my path to be your path. I know that it is going to be hard. I know there's going to be persecution. Uh, there's going to be a lot of learning, I have no doubt. But I know that with all those things, I have you with me. I have your strength. I have your grace. I have your mercy. I have your forgiveness. And with you, I can do this. God, please turn all of my choices into what your will is what it what it is that you want not only for my life but for the the lives of people around me god in your son's name i pray amen <laughs>